New numbers from Customs and Border Protection reveal October was the eighth month in a row with more than 200,000 migrant encounters on the southern border. But as the focus remains on the immigrants, agents and politicians, Straight Arrow News wanted to know how this influx impacts locals. Many are eager to share their stories, including Dolores Chacon Chavira, who lives in downtown El Paso, Texas. That's the border wall in your backyard. Mm -hmm. How does immigration affect you? It's intrusive, the illegal part. Uh, I want fairness for everybody. Uh, it's not working as well as it should be. And it's shameful for anybody to say that the border is secure. It's insulting to those that we know better. And yes, fences do work. This is not Trump's wall. It was approved in 2006 with the Secure Fence Act. The bipartisan bill was supported by Senators Biden, Obama, Clinton, McConnell, and Schumer. Other people could live their quality of life, so to speak. I couldn't. And that's a, that is the truth. I had illegals on my roof and my backyard, yeah, under the car. I even spoke to a couple of them to tell them to please leave my area. Dolores is a retired educator whose borderfront home has been in her family for generations. She hosted a roundtable discussion for Straight Arrow News with other residents who say record migration over the last year has been overwhelming. I mean, we can sympathize for them and we can help them in other ways, but to turn around and say, well, they're migrants, they have a right to be here. No, they don't, because especially not at the expense of those people who are here legally. Like 83% of El Paso, members of this group are Latino, live in bilingual households, and often go back and forth between El Paso and sister city Juarez, Mexico for work or personal reasons. That doesn't mean that we're heartless and we don't feel for the, the people that are suffering, but if we have laws, and part of that laws, of the immigration laws, are is the asylum. And that's exactly why we have asylum, for those people that are being persecuted by the government, not fleeing poverty. I feel sorry for them, but do it the right way, like we did it in my family. Lupita Meneses comes from a family of immigrants. It all started with her father, who entered the Bracero program, a World War II era agreement with Mexico to help fill agricultural labor shortages. Why do you want to pay all this money to the coyotes instead of paying a lawyer and make it the right way to come to United States. Jennifer Ivey is a pecan farmer southwest of town. She says there are many employers in the area who are willing to sponsor immigrants to help fill job openings. We've had several employees that had to leave in the middle of the night because of the cartel and have come across and then we sponsor them as an employer and then they go through the process legally. Yeah. And it's much cheaper than what they're paying the coyotes. Exactly. I think the going price right now is between eight and 15,000. Yes. And it's about $4,000 to get an attorney and file your paperwork yes. and get a sponsor. Immigration thrust this city into the national spotlight. That includes busing migrants out of state and a leaked phone call during which a senior Biden administration official pressured El Paso Mayor Oscar Leeser not to declare an emergency until after the midterm elections. These Texans are thoroughly engaged in what makes national headlines as it happens in their own backyard. When they sent the 50 to Martha's Vineyard, you know, that they declared an emergency. Mm -hmm. We had 50, we we had yeah. 50 suffocate in a the back of a semi truck and nobody cared about that. In September, Immigrant arrivals overwhelmed the area and large groups slept on the streets. To respond, the city and county created welcome centers that arranged travel for immigrants to other cities. County commissioners then got FEMA to pay for it. We weren't willing to move forward until we got the money. And once we got the 6.3 million, we set up the process center. Is El Paso County in a place where this is sustainable? It's only sustainable if we keep getting the money from FEMA. Local officials we spoke with say El Paso is a welcoming, humanitarian community. So we're, I'm very con cognizant that if you treat the migrants properly, that one day 
they'll remember how we treated them and I want them to feel good about being in the United States. So a lot of these are gonna be our citizens. They're gonna be working, they're gonna be part, part of our workforce. What kind of an attitude would we like for them to have about the United States? There is a general consensus on both sides of the aisle that the immigration system is broken. What in all of your minds would fix it? Let's, let's get rid of chain migration. Let's target our new immigrants to the needs that we have. You know, what is it that we need? We need more labor, let's let more people with lesser skills in. We need more technical skills, let's let more people with technical skills. I mean, if you wanna have immigration reform, then let's have that conversation. But right now, let's enforce the laws because the laws are in, are, uh, in the books to protect American citizens. And that's the number one responsibility of the government, to provide for the tranquility of its citizens. This group has hoped the situation will improve. But even though they're the family of immigrants and live on the border, they feel Washington doesn't hear them 2,000 miles away.